flustered that one up. What's wrong, Joe? Two, three, don't be two, flustered, three. babe. Don't be flustered. You got it, man. Come it's on, making babe. me more anxious, you, man. No, just you're. Yeah, you're tense. You're just. Would, you, <laughs> would, would you please play some music? Hey, hey, hey could you, 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 you rub his balls? Make him relax a little bit. It stops right here. Actually, that would make me relax a little bit, but. I you know I was recently watching Ali G. Ali G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, there's a scene in this movie. I don't know. Can't get my legs that high. <laughs> his dog was like, <laughs> he woke up, he's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's how when you're coming in. Go for it. All right. Welcome, this is the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts, I'm Joe Clark. Big G. Albert Santilli. And I'm Karen Harvey Firestein tonight. And I'm John Passer. Woo. Be sure to view us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, if you want to be a guest on the show, uh, bring a bottle of unopened whiskey, your favorite whiskey, uh, or whatever you want to review with us on the night that you visit. And um, we will consider open bottles if it's something rare, something that isn't readily available in any other place. Uh, we'll review that as time goes on, or you email us, or whatever. Um, on tonight's show, we are featuring Sonoma County Whiskey Batch Number 2. So it's a, it's a hard one to get, and every time I try to find this online, I couldn't get it for us. But uh, John actually uh, sent this to me, and um, I'm really eager to try this. It's a cast strength. It's 110.7 proof, I believe. 0.6, I think. 110.6 proof. Okay. And, um, I'm going to fill it up there, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Show it up there. Sounded like you said, yeah, sure, shut up there. <laughs> shut up there, you fucker. Trying, trying to speak. <laughs> there it is, boys and girls. It's a nice looking bottle. It is, nice label. They've actually just recently revamped all their labels, too, so it doesn't look anything oh, like that. Oh, we got the old label. label. Yeah. It's like having the old Weller label. We can't open it, though. We the Canadian Club. The Canadian Club. The Canadian Club. Let me pull out the Canadian Club. <laughs> so, our guest tonight is John Passo. He is uh, actually a childhood friend of mine. I met him when I was about nine years old. Uh, we lived on the same street. And um, he actually has, we'll get into it later, a little bit of background in distilling, um, also uh, brewing craft beers. And uh, he lives out in Willits, California. You got it. And he owns a farm out there. So it's kind of like, is it a, a, a what do they call that type of farm, self? Uh, it's, um, well, self-sustaining is probably yes. what you're yeah, thinking yeah, of. Yeah. But we're, we're uh, focused on all organic, homestead kind of method, composting toilets all off grid the nearest telephone pole from us is about a mile away so you know we got a solar system and it's uh all spring fed for the water system so it's all inclusive as best as we can make it awesome yeah cool um we're not really uh doing any cigars tonight or anything because he's getting over the fires that are going out there and that kind of damages your lungs a little bit so we're not going right. to subject him to that uh, but they Much do have some it. cigars if you guys just want to <coughs> Talk about them, especially the one you have here too. So I'm smoking a uh, uh, Royal Havana Cigars supplies us with all of our cigars. So give a shout out to Dave over at Royal Havana Cigars in Willoughby, Ohio, uh, three eight four 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 eight uh, Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby. So I have a box press. This is the uh, uh, Ecuadorian Habano style cigar that we normally smoke. Albert has the same one. He just has the six sixty ring gauge, and I have the standard box press. So that's what we're smoking today. So I want to say happy Thanksgiving to uh, World Havana Cigars. Thank you. I want to talk about one that I got, it's a special one I picked up. Sneaking by. This is a, a Winston Churchill. Correct. <clears throat> and it's uh, I bought it specifically for the show tonight because <coughs> it's called a Winston Churchill Late Hour. Late Hour, which Later. is fitting. You can blame John. He, he said we couldn't smoke tonight. Yeah, sorry. sorry. It's okay. yeah, I would totally agree. You can still blame because I fine. love cigars. But and Karen. Karen yeah. was first. Yeah. Karen was first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. true. You know, they, right, they, so yeah. they, so they age this tobacco in um, scotch barrels, which is oh. nice. It's a, oh, so wow. I can't, I've never had it before. Everyone's told me great things about it. It is a very good cigar. It's Winston Churchill wow. Late Hour, if you can find them. Wow. Pick and it's up. not a gimmick, good boys and girls. It's actually a, a real deal cigar. You know, one thing I was always um, interested in on the cigar front was um, I thought you would buy it, maybe you'll try next time, is the Pappy cigar releases. I have yet to I've buy any. I've seen those, actually. Um, yeah, yeah every, every year that Pappy's released, those are released, so it should be soon yeah, again. It's out right now. Okay. 
Are those a limited release, or you? Get yeah, they those? only do them so many times. Because yeah. the guy Greg I used to work with, um, that you knew, Greg Coleman, mm-hmm. he yeah. got he actually bought a box because he had heard things like, "Oh, they're kind of gimmicky." Or not. He says they are delicious. <coughs> mm-hmm. So the, I I, have, I just seen those available. Um, uh, I, I thought about picking up some, and uh, you know, then the unfortunate thing with my father, so uh, you know, that took precedence over everything. So right. That's what yeah, I thought. Right. So. Definitely. All right, so we're going to uh, do a little commercial uh, thing here, and uh, we will eventually, like I said before, we'll have actual commercials. It takes a while to work on those and figure out what we want to get from all the different vendors here, the co-op, uh, Royal Havana, and also the Premier Auto. We're just still kind of thinking about that. So Royal Havana Cigar, one of our sponsors. Uh, Greg, if you want to say anything about them. Uh, so again, Dave, Dave uh, Samrock from Royal Havana Cigars supplies us with all of our cigars, cutters, lighters, ashtrays. Uh, you know, they're not just tailored to cigars either. I mean, they they have a walk-in humidor. Uh, all of their cigars are more of a higher-end cigar rather than a standard. Our uh, our our own cigars of Royal Vanna, I consider myself as a part of Royal Vanna, uh, me because of mine and Dave's relationship. Um, they, all our stuff comes in fresh weekly, um, never dry, never dirty, so, you know, give them a shot. But they also have boutique items, so, um, you know, for Christmas gifts, birthdays, anything like that, gift cards, they do all that, plus uh, Royal Havana Cigars, they do parties. So if you want to have a cigar party for maybe Christmas, uh, we, we just did a couple of weddings recently. Uh, we did something for uh, the city of Cleveland just recently as well. So uh, give them a look up, jump on their website, Royal Havana Cigars, and uh, that's it. So shout out to the Royal Havana Club. Thank you. The land of the Cleves, man. <laughs> With them four big Then also the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op, which everybody knows, <coughs> most people that watch the show know. And then um, also my shop, Premier Automotive. We pretty much work on anything you can bring us, um, up to a half ton, sometimes uh, three-quarter ton trucks. Um, we do specialize in German automotive uh, as far as uh, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, a lot of Porsches. And, uh, a lot we do of Porsches. a lot of Ferraris. We are getting a lot of Porsches. Doing a lot of Ferraris too. Um, we do well. some. Um, we have the testing equipment for all that. Correct. So, I mean, we spent a lot of money recently on testing equipment. So it's a car show at Premier uh, Automotive, as I, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, I've seen it's it. a car show at Premier Automotive. It, yeah, we, yeah. we, we have really a lot is. of nice stuff in the garage right now. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if they want me saying that, but yeah, That's we do have a lot of stuff in the garage right now. Actually, we have one of uh, a handful of uh, Mercedes in the shop recently, not to get off subject, but it was a uh, seven, I believe it's 1970 300, and most of them were six cylinders or diesels. This was actually the 6.3 V8, and uh, there's literally none in existence hmm. anymore, and uh, it's, I think, one of five left in the States, uh-huh. and it, it, is, it has 9,000 miles on it, uh-huh. originally. 1973? 1970. 70. Yeah, uh-huh. 9,000 miles on it, and uh-huh. that, that'll be a probably a couple hundred thousand dollar car when it goes to auction. I'm uh-huh. sure. Yeah. And then we got? Well, this is going to seem like a biased thing real quick, but it's not. I just want to thank you for putting those snow tires on my truck, my Jeep. <laughs> uh, they, you know, Joe, it's... A good, honest mechanic is hard to find these days, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know. So thanks, thank you, Joe. No problem. I appreciate that. And uh, you did some other work on my truck, some with you know the upper front, whatever, whatever, whatever. Ball joint. Um, the ball <laughs> cock ball needed joint. fixed. <laughs> the upper front ball cock. Weird. So uh, thanks for fixing it. And go to uh, Premier Automotive. Yeah, and I want to throw a shout out to Joe as well. Because he just sold me the same tires he sold Albert and saved me an extra seventy five dollars less than he charged Albert. So I just want to say thank you, fucking dick. Oh, no, he did. <laughs> Regardless, it's a statement of conditions. It's the way things are. Like they really did a good job over there. And to pontificate where Joe um, Greg left off about doing private events and that kind of thing Correct. at cigar lounges and these private events like smoking. Um, you name it, That's it's always been something that's cool and sophisticated and I have a background in jazz studies. Now, the North Coast Jazz Ensemble is based out of Sugar and Falls, Ohio. We do all kinds of private events. Most of what I do personally is private events, private lessons, and um, every every now and then. That's pretty much it. I do a, yeah, you some do weddings, lounge. You do, I mean, you're yeah, all, weddings, you private travel. events, but I, I enjoy some of the local shops. You know, the Paris Room has been great to musicians around... Um, like Sharon Falls and the Grove Hill before they closed. So 
Check out the yeah, Northwest Jazz and stuff. Chagrin Falls does support like, uh, the, the, the jazz, the jazz uh, train, if you will. So, uh, and he's Albert is a very talented uh, musician, and he can pick up uh, a guitar, a guitar, and play it. He can play the piano. He can play all kinds of stuff. He's he's very talented. And uh, off air, he uh, he entertains the hell out of us, and he's, he's got a great sense of humor. He's so, the yeah. ice cream man. He's the ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I've never seen him lick his own cone, though. But anyway, go ahead. So this is really exciting Thank for God. us. Uh, very exciting for me because uh, I've been holding on to this bottle. We've been holding on to this bottle for a long time. I don't remember how long ago. What, what's the last time I saw you? You saw me last year, and I talked about it. And then I Around shipped it out It was in fall. It was. It, I was actually escaping the fires of Northern California right, last, last year. year. I got yeah, evacuated right. last year. And so I spent a week on the road, drove back here with my wife, did some pickup work out here, Hang drunk with him. Yeah, yeah. And I went back to California, sure but did. I told him about this, and I went on and on, and we were talking about it. And I finally found a bottle of it, in Northern yeah. California, and shipped it out to him. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm really, really excited to try this. Okay. I hope I love it. I, really do. <laughs> I hope you love it too, yeah, because it's you know, you know how this gives, guys. Horrible. I mean, it's it's yay or nay. A lot of times, yeah. it's either mm -hmm. it's either right. horrible eh, or it's really good. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think they're younger whiskeys, but. Mm -hmm. From what I can, what I've been reading online about them and about that batch specifically, as you said, bat, you have to get. I remember you texting me, you have to get batch number two, mm -hmm. and I could, I found it one time on Casker's had it, and it was a lot of money, and um, and I was gonna order it one day. I was like, fuck it, I'll just get yeah, it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then it was gone. Yeah. Out of stock. I'm like, oh, come on. But the reviews I read on that batch number two are really good. Yeah. So hopefully they're right. Cause, you know. Some reviews, it's, it's based on the reviewer. It's, it's on the reviewer. It's his palate. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, if not, we make John do our next show from his car while we're down here. Greg, why don't you uh, <laughs> why don't you start cracking that open? All right, I can. Do Unless that. John, do you wanna? You know, no, no, be my guest. Okay, be John, my guest. Right. So, you know John. how much to pour in each. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we give John the honors. He's he was kind give of us our, give the first bring us here on the today. Yeah. There. Yeah. Wet that when you get it open. Wet the cork. I wanna I wanna smell it too. Sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna, I got cheated on mine a little bit. I got like the little bitty pork. <laughs> the little bitty pork? Yeah. Put the same one I got, dude. Oh, he put two drops in. <laughs> yeah, Are dude. you better now, Joe? I am. <laughs> oh, There's my a bit goodness. Of color there. Oh, for the love of okay? Pete. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. You can see it against. There you go. That's a little better. That's nice. Nice color. Mm. It does have a nice color. It's got a nice nose to it, too. It does. It does. Nice legs. It does. It's heavy. It's got a really mellow nose to it. Like it it's not. It for being a hundred and ten point six proof. It's not right. I'm not getting a lot of. Too, like, I get there's like alcohol no, there, but not, I mean, it's minimal right. alcohol. Like well said. like a a light Irish. So John, is this um, distillery by I'm where you live? At that at uh, it's about proof, an hour really? and a half south of me. Okay. Yeah, wow. I live up uh, two thousand feet up on the side of a mountain, so there's, not, is... there's not much around me. We got to drive to places. I smoke. I mean, nice. I smell hard, hard. I'm going to say corn, but hold that thought. No. Yes. Hold that thought. I smell no, yes. corn silk <laughs> and legion. <laughs> Is what I smell. Corn silk and what? All right, let's the let leafing, these breathe you know, for a little oh, bit. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. husk. Yeah, oh. the husk. Yeah, All right, guys, let's sit them down, let them breathe for a little bit, and um, let's get into uh, Mr. Big G there. What do you want to ask our guest here today? Since he's the star of our show, and I'm really excited <coughs> about this. Um, it's I, always, I love hanging out with John. We didn't hang out for years just because life God, and it's, moved it was a and all long that stuff. Time. Yeah. And um, the last time he came over was like, we never. <laughs> it was like we just hung drugs, out. It was just like we just hung references. out. Yeah, those are the best that's friends. Like, that's how we we hung out two days ago. Like <laughs> I mean, best. it was like literally probably damn near ten years. Since we saw each other last, it was probably more than ten years. Okay. Yeah, because so, I, I mean, it was like we and we talked so. every now and then if we found each other online and stuff. But it's like it was like hanging out with him yesterday. Yeah, you absolutely. know what I mean? That's true really friends. Cool. That's yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Great friends. It was great. That's my wife nice. loved him. She's really upset <laughs> that she's not hanging out with him tonight. Uh, my neighbors, Jesse and Ashley, which right. you guys know, right, sure. are really up. They just found out today he's in town. They hung out last time, too, and they are like, that's the coolest guy we ever met. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, <laughs> they didn't say that. And, uh, no, they did. They did. And uh, they were they're actually really upset with me that they're not hanging out with him tonight. Uh, so. Oh, good. I'm glad they're mad. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Spin it over to G. Sorry, All right, right, so, guys. So I just met you today for the first time. I've heard a ton about you. So uh, you, you, tell us about yourself. Tell, tell, how'd you meet Joe? I, you know, tell me about where you're living now. What do you got going on? I okay. mean, I know you're in town for the holidays. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, so tell me about yourself. Uh, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, University okay. Heights. Met him when he his family moved in onto my street in Saybrook Road okay, back Saybrook. in the day. No, it was. And we went to the same grade school for a couple couple of years. Yep. Started our own band together briefly. <laughs> Raw yep. was the name of it, and uh, we didn't know how to play musical instruments at all. <laughs> you just wanted to get girls, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Is that uh, what musical instruments are about? <laughs> sort of much. Jason's tale. <laughs> That's why I started. Uh, and then um, uh, I ended up moving out to Los Angeles when I was 20 uh, to sure. start uh, acting. Acting. Oh, okay. So I did a bunch of uh, TV shows, a bunch of movies, uh, stunts for a beer commercial one time, and uh, did graphic design. Uh, did work for Shaka Khan and Leonard Nimoy and a okay. bunch of other famous actors as well for, nice. for the graphic design and um, started, uh, I did video game testing out there as well, but I was mostly, <laughs> let me try that again, mostly out there for the acting gig, but that's actually where I learned how to do organic farming, I did backyard farming, urban farming, uh, the largest crop of peppers I had back there was uh, 200 and, 217 Two hundred thirteen pepper plants out of twenty-seven different varieties, spaced over two houses in the backyard, wow. and I just I went went up from there with my farming. Good for you. Yeah, moved back to Cleveland, uh, became a professional brewer. Um, worked for uh, Hop and Frog Brewing Company as one of their brewers. Actually, I worked for them when they got rated the seventeenth best brewery on the planet. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I might have even ran into you. I played music there with a couple people and. But I used to brew for Thirsty Dog oh, for Grant Street. Actually, you might have met me. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Small <laughs> world. Yeah, and then you know um, Dave Hammer, a guitar player. Dave Hammer and Walter Prettyman was playing yeah. the violin. Okay, yeah, those are my boys. Ah. <laughs> sweet. Nice, nice. Um, and then uh, I've done. I do a lot of brewing consulting. After that, I consulted with Great Lakes Brewing Company and University uh, University of Chicago on an ancient ale that they were doing and. Uh, moved back out to California with my wife and uh, continuing the professional brewing. I was the barrel aging operations manager for Anderson Valley Brewing Company. Continued to do the consulting. I now work for McFadden Farm and Vineyard uh, as their tasting room manager. Nice. And then I own my own farm, PS Farms. Which you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PS Farms. Awesome. Uh, named PS Esther Paso and my wife Summers. So. Yes. We're gonna, we're gonna, like we're gonna make you a picture, uh, feature on the Instagram account. Yeah, sure, sure. We're also going to uh, and we'll, we'll hashtag PS yeah. Farms. We'll give it, I'll get that info for you later. Yeah, yeah we're sure. gonna we're gonna have you uh, uh, give your information, you information out, you know, yeah. on here you know, for all our viewers that want. Yeah, would appreciate you know, that. Get to know you, so yeah, I okay, so yeah. appreciate you being here today. Yeah. And so yeah, we're doing the the organic farming thing where. Most everybody in that area grows pot, but we're a food farm, so we're feeding the stoners. Gotcha. So, uh, <laughs> somebody has to. Wait, you grow uh, Doritos? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. oh, Doritos. I've never seen a Dorito on a Funyun. Funyuns? GMOs are amazing what they can do now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, the, uh, we're in town right now for the holidays. My wife and I are visiting family, and it kind of coincided, luckily, with uh, the fires in Northern California. So right. we uh, we were there for about a week while it was bad, and then hiked back out here. And uh, at the time that we left, it was the worst air quality on the planet. Wow. It was that area? So I'm how long really been? grateful to be back in Cleveland during this time. How long you been there? Uh, been married. We got married on October twelfth. Uh, don't screw this up, John. October twelfth, twenty thirteen. Got kids? <laughs> Not yet. No, Not smart yet. guy. <laughs> I, we're in I, knew, I knew he was intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in negotiations. Yeah. Yeah. Bad cop. Yeah. So uh, I have a million questions for you, but I don't. Minutes. I don't want to steal Joe's thunder. So <laughs> go ahead, Joe. So what, uh, what, what's uh, just to get it back to the uh, whole whiskey thing on the whiskey? Yeah. So what's your whiskey back backstory history about it? Um, favorite whiskey or whiskeys? Um, how do you acquire yours most of the time? Well. Um, 
Uh, well, I'll tell you an uh, interesting story about how I got into whiskey. Yeah. You remember it, you helped me with it. Uh, my being in Cleveland, Ohio, most people have oh, Jesus. bars in their basement, <laughs> whether they're defunct, but a lot of the times in the when the houses were built, they were built with a bar in there. Sorry, Dad so, Paso. Yeah, but <laughs> it's all here. It's all, he found, now he finds it's all, out now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he knew. Um, we'd go down there and sneak mm. tastes of different liquors. And my favorite was a Canadian whiskey. And ever since then, I've enjoyed spirits. And uh, I, I've done distilling on my own as well. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just, I, I really I acquired a taste. Flashback. From way yeah. back when, and uh, I, oddly enough, you know, my my go-to, I might get judged for this. I understand it's it's an entry level. We always judge bourbon, but uh, Crown yeah. Royal is just like my go-to <coughs> every day. If I just want a little taste of something, enjoy, I'll, I'll do a Crown Royal. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, I get most of my stuff either high end or low end from a cool bottle shop down in Santa Rosa, California, which is about an hour and a half south of me, is um, the uh, Bottle Barn. And they have just, it's, if you guys ever get in the area, it's, it's awe-inspiring. It's just rows and rows and rows okay. of everything that you can think of. Sounds like heaven. Spirit, mm -hmm. wine, like beer. beer. Um, and that's yeah. actually where I Sitting was able to locate this little gem, is they had some uh, on the back dusty shelf that I searched through and found. So uh, that's actually where I get most of my stuff from. Okay. Right. Awesome. Um, what's your favorite whiskey? The yeah. type? What kind? Uh, bourbons are my favorite, but I think my favorite all-around whiskey, bourbon, rye, um, scotch, out of all of it, I would say uh, Glenlivet 18 here uh, or Pappy 10. The old Rip 10? Yeah. Really? Those, would be, those would be my two favorite. Oh, well, we got one of those here. Yeah, we do. We have Glen Levin 18. Nice, nice. I have yet to have anything higher than 18, oh, and I've damn. heard that it is just a whole nother ball game. No good. When you get that. into 21, yeah. um, I've had 21 and 25, Okay. and they're incredible. That's everything they, I've heard it, it, about. It's like, it is like, um, <laughs> it is like a whole nother ball game on the Glen Levin. Yeah. So yeah. Um, okay. Um, what do you, uh, so most of you acquire, you don't do like we do as far as acquiring your whiskey and stuff like that. You don't have people kind of meal it for you or anything like that. No, no, I don't do the meal You probably thing, have a much but, better uh, selection than I, we do. I do part. have, so being in the industry, I do have access to a lot of things people don't, which is really nice. I get to do a lot of behind the scenes tours. Do you uh, um, help, this, do you still get into distilling or anything like that as far as whiskey? Uh, no, no, I, I don't on a professional level. Okay. Uh, on an amateur level, I do help a lot of people uh, with their setups, and uh, I'm going to be helping somebody uh, coming up soon. They've got 40 gallons of Pinot Noir that uh, didn't turn out the way they wanted it to, so I'm going to run it through a still, talk, right. you know, talk them through it, guide Make them. Some grappa. It, uh, going a little, a little different than grappa, but uh, yeah. right. there I've had actually some fantastic. Being in Mendocino County, sure. it's one right. of the largest wine regions, wine, yeah. and uh, I have some had some fantastic homemade grappa no before. And it's it's like grappa is usually like, well, grappa. Right. It's just like, uh, uh, but oh, some of the stuff I've had where it's just it's smooth. Yeah, it's a little bit of hay, a little grape note on the back end, and right. just ah, uh, delicious. But um, uh, I don't I don't really do a lot professionally. Um, there was another part of your question that I don't think I answered. Now, do you, um, can, can you talk about like your castmate stint or anything like oh, that? Oh yeah, totally. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I, I wanted to touch. I didn't know if that was something I could mention or not. Yeah, yeah, no, I that, that one, that, out. that so. one's, that one's cool to mention. Okay. Uh, I was working for Anderson Valley Brewing Company, of course, as their barrel agent operations manager, so I oversee the whole barrel operation, uh, including all of their sour beers as well. So we did a lot of wine barrel and, and bourbon barrel for that. And uh, they get pretty exclusively barrels from Jameson. Okay. Uh, and because of that, 
Um, I mean, it, it goes from Jameson to us. Uh, it gets emptied and we get it. And because of that, because of that relationship that the owners built up with them over time, when they started to do their cask make program for the first batch, they turned to the owner and said, we want four of your barrels, your used barrels, so take the beer out of it and send it back to us. So I got to choose the four barrels that went into the first batch. Of course, they had a bunch of other breweries do it as well because it was a large release. Four barrels aren't going to cut it. But uh, I had the, the honor of going through one of our huge Arker was the brand of beer that was in there. That's their Imperial Stout. So I, want, I chose that one because it's a high alcohol beer. It's like, I think 14, 15 percent alcohol. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, a it's, it's a very robust Imperial Stout that's huh. bourbon barrel aged. Uh, and I wanted that flavor in the wood so that once they put the uh, distillate into it, it's still going to be strong enough that it's going to show through in the final product. So I gotcha. tasted through about 45 to 50 barrels one one morning into the long hours of the afternoon, um, <laughs> tasting through all these barrels to find the four that I really liked. And then How did you feel after that? It was just another day at the office. That's, that was part of my job is um, when we do an evacuation of, of a lot of barrels, um, it's usually, for the regular run, it's usually about 55 barrels that I have to taste every single barrel before we pull it out because it gets all blended together and if one of those barrels is bad, it spoils the whole batch. So I'm the quality control at the front end and I had to make sure that everything's good. Right. And then of course we do testing afterwards after it's all blended together, microbial testing and um, I did a lot of that. Uh, that as well. What's, what's microbial testing? Uh, testing for beer spoiling microbes like Pediococcus, Lactobacillus, wild yeast, uh, Britannomyces and things. Okay. So I did okay. plating, I did microscopy, microscopy. Uh, you know, I did, I did the whole nine yards. Uh, I mean, they've got a huge, wonderful lab setup that usually took the brunt of that, but I, I got to be involved with that as well. Okay. But uh, I got to choose the four barrels and they had a FedEx truck there the next day. We, and we just loaded it into the truck and off they went and got, got put into the first stout batch of Jameson's Caskmates. Well, that is cool. so cool because we yeah, just did really the Caskmates awesome. show a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. that was cool. And I, I heard you guys give me, Joe, yeah, give me a yes. shout out. I know yeah. the guy that, I'm not yeah. sure I'm supposed to tell you, say this, but I know the guy that was involved. <laughs> right, nice. yeah. oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So here I am. Yeah. Cool. So, um, he does sound back. Do you have anything else to interview him, ask him about? Anything on your mind? Or I was going to talk to him about his his, uh, his movie career, some of the different yeah. movies he was in. Yeah. I know he spoke about some of that stuff, some things that he you know was you know doing for uh, the movies that people see today. So um, so I was just curious about some of that stuff that you did for, yeah, for got, Hollywood, so to say. I got say. a lot of stories. I was there for five and a half years. Wow. So. Yeah, all the way from you know working with Johnny Depp down to being offered a pile of cocaine at a Los Angeles party that was like this big. And I wow. looked at it and I go, my life's going to go either one of two ways at this Absolutely. moment. So I was like, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to go over there. Appreciate it. Thank right. you so much. <laughs> but, wow. You know, I, I, I lived good the Hollywood you. life. You sure. know, I did it all. Except for the pile of cocaine. So it's a good choice. <laughs> what are some of? The, can you say, name some of the movies that you? Yeah, were, yeah. yeah. Um, I was in the fire, first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Actually, I was talking to a friend about that yesterday because they turned on the third movie. Mm -hmm. I was I worked on the first movie for two weeks. I got asked back for the second movie, but I was busy with another project, so I couldn't do it. And then on the third movie, I worked on the video game, uh, uh, World Pirate, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean: World's End. I worked on the video game for that, so I actually have a, a good, good yep. run, pirate run. But um, yeah, I worked on the first movie. I was in uh, Starship Troopers 2. Mm. Um, I was a uh, season regular on the final season of Boston Public on TV. Uh, worked on Malcolm in the Middle and um, uh, The Italian Job, American Pie 3. I played Cousin Jimmy in that. Um, uh, I just I just uh, wrapped on a production up in Willits. It's a local B movie called 
Undead Zombie Hookers. It's a horror movie. Hey, I've uh, heard that's right up your alley. Uh, <laughs> I have seen that out there. I watch Pluto TV and stuff. I've seen it in like. <laughs> yeah, we've been showing the trailers yeah. for it a lot, uh, and uh, I play one character in that, and I do three different characters on voiceover because I do. I do different voices as well, Schwarzenegger, and Bullwinkle, and a bunch of stuff. Um, so I've done a bunch of voiceover. That, that was my latest project. I also did uh, American Splendor here in Cleveland, the Harvey Pekar movie. He's, uh, no, well, yeah, he's from Cleveland. Yeah. I'm thinking of the other guy from Sugar and Falls who did uh, little National Russo's? Lampoons. No, not Russo's. National Lampoons, you know. Um, but anyway, go ahead. Um, yeah, and... Uh, that did stunts for a Sam McGill beer commercial. That was that was fun. I got to they <laughs> I show up on set. It's downtown uh, Los Angeles, and it's supposed to be downtown New York, but mm -hmm. you know downtown looks like downtown anyway. <coughs> right. And uh, they needed somebody to do stunts because their person fell through. And I was like, I do stunts. <laughs> I don't do stunts, <laughs> but that's how you do it in the industry. They didn't check to see if I had any require the requiring paperwork credentials, or credentials or anything, and so I spent the day running from a real life buffalo in downtown <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> and the stunt it, it's supposed to be the running of the bulls in uh, you know in Barcelona or wherever, right, right, but it's like the yeah. running of the buffalo in America. You know, so it was a mock of that. <clears throat> you know, so I had the white shirt, the red bandana, the white pants, oh, that's and funny. and. The director's behind me, and in front of him, between us, is this buffalo. That's, you know, it's a, right. a two-ton buffalo. And he goes, okay, when we yell action, the buffalo's going to run, and I want you to run like your life depends on it. It does. I'm like, and you had no problem with No that, problem with this motivation. I got it. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I, the stunt was, I'm running from the buffalo, and then I jump up on the uh, the guardrails that they have on the side, mm -hmm. and the buffalo is supposed to run past me. And take after take, I did it, and the buffalo nailed the stunt too. I don't know how well of a stunt man he was, but the buffalo did it. Uh, but one take, he clipped my wallet. My wallet was hanging out like this much, you know how you right. have it in your mm -hmm. back pocket. He just clipped that with his back, and it sent me spinning off the guardrails, and I landed on my ass. I didn't get trampled. But uh, yeah, it was wow. the was ultimate pickpocket. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and so that that was uh, that was a fun stunt stunt job that I did. Oh, awesome. Shit. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, did did a lot. Of, I think I did over thirty projects mm -hmm. when I was living there. So thank, I got a thank, lot of stories. How did you get thanks into that? Sure, no thanks for sure. How did you get into that? Um, Money? Was, <laughs> uh, no, uh, lack of. Uh, I. Uh, I did a play back in my high school days, and uh, actually, no, I, yeah, I did a play back in high school, and uh, I, it was opening day, they did the curtains up, I come out, and I say something, and the audience laughed, <laughs> and I was like, this is it, yeah. this That's is cool. it, That's and cool. then I researched the industry, and moved out there and by the time I moved out there the industry had shifted from who you knew to what family you were born into mm. so I didn't get as far as I I had planned but I achieved all my goals you know I got to see myself on a movie screen multiple right. times and you know, cool. well, good some of you. my stuff that I've done for TV That's impressive. Is, you, you did a lot very you accomplished yeah. a lot thank you one cool. time I went to LA I got into a, ta a taxi cab and my friend my business partner's girlfriend at the time really wanted to get this tattoo I think there's like some TV show yeah, LA Inc. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So she, she's like, we gotta, we gotta stop. And I'm like, mm -hmm. fine. Like, it's just on this plane for like so many hours. I just want to <laughs> go. So we go there, and he jumps out of the cab, runs across the street, taxi driver. He was almost getting hit by a car. Like, yeah. he's just so, he's like one of those guys from Pittsburgh. The, cat, the taxi driver's like, sir, excuse me. This is LA. <laughs> it's crazy out here. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty it only, I found out, I found out real quick. You know, you could just. Watch the people on the streets. Oh, there. It's 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 crazy. It, it it's as much as I am grateful for the time that I spent in L.A. and I, I am grateful for my experiences. I wouldn't have had these experiences anywhere else on the planet. It's a shithole. Oh my God, that place is. It's crazy. It's oppressive. It's dangerous. 
I agree. I've been, I've been held up twice there. Yeah. And I mean, it's 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 a crazy place to live. But if you want to be in the industry and you don't want to create your own thing where you live, it's either Hollywood or New York. You got to be All in right. it. Right. So I agree with you one hundred percent. Thank you very much. My pleasure, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you. And, and, and thank you so much for having me on the show. I really do appreciate this. I've been looking no, forward to coming yeah, on we're for a while. Forward to this too. Cool. The other thing too is that um, Karen usually does the uh, whiskey history about the um, drink of the night, and it's the Sonoma County Cast Strength Batch Number Two. But uh, her voice is kind of jacked for the night, so just a tad. Uh, John's actually going to do it for us. So if you want to get into the history there of it, or yeah. some side yeah. notes, yeah, I took I took a little out. bit of notes. So I do apologize yeah. for referring kind of down on the but spot the, to him. So. Uh, I'll see if I I've got big shoes to fill here. You're so good, you're uh, good. we'll see what I can do. So uh, this comes from Sonoma Distilling Company in Sonoma County. Uh, they're based out of Rohnert Park, which is a little subsection of Santa Rosa. Um, the, the head distiller and owner, I believe, is, his name's Adam. Uh, he started the company back in 2010. He was one of the first 200 distilleries in the United States. Uh, he's got a, a handmade copper alembic pot still that he does all of his distilling out of. It's beautiful, but because of how the still is set up and fired, he's forced to do at minimum two distill distillations per batch. Per batch. Um, and that's generally what he sticks to is, is two. Because anything more, as we know, just kills the flavor. Um, <clears throat> it primarily uses American oak. Actually, I think exclusively uses American oak for all of his stuff. And the neat part is, being in, in Sonoma and being in California, he does have that, uh, that mindset of it's all non-GMO, it's all California grains he uses. When he does smoke grains, he has a place in Petaluma at, at, and uh, another place in Sonoma that smokes all of his malts for him nice. so it, it's it's as big as California is that that's considered super local uh, for sourcing all of his grains and work like that uh, so it's, it's a really cool company I've, I've discovered them back in like 2014 or 2015 and going to the tasting room uh, California now has the law that you can have a tasting room uh, on premise when you have a distillery. They used to not be that way. I think they changed that about three years ago. So going to a tasting room is really neat because the, they're they're firing the the still there. They've got the mash tun, and right next door is the tasting room, like the, oh, cool. the garage bay over. And they do a lot of cool aging experiments. They have some small small barrels that they use, a couple gallons, all the way up to the 53 gallon um, uh, barrels that they use. And they have them on racks. And on each rack, they've got a temperature gauge and a, uh, I forget the name of the device that tells you how much humidity is in the air. Barometer? Uh, I think barometer, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. And and at each level, each rack level, it's a different temperature right. and it's a different, different amount of humidity. And because where they're situated, they get a lot of that coastal influence that comes in. So some of that salt air comes in, uh, some of that fog will roll in at different times. And by tracking yeah. each one, he's able to have extensive tasting notes and figure oh, wow. out where, where each flavor is coming from, where is the ideal spot to pull this flavor out of from this barrel on this rack. You know, rack number three, has more of this, so we're going to pull it from there, and we're going to pull a little bit from rack two because it gets a little less of this. Right. So they're Mix they've the been missing pieces. Yeah, they they've got it dialed in in a way that I don't think I've ever seen. That's pretty well. Yeah, it's really That's neat. Cool. So this one, I I've had batch one, I've had batch two, and I've had batch three, and I think they're up to batch four now. Is the current release, and by far. I mean, they were all fantastic. Batch two was my personal favorite. It had a, they had every note that I wanted out of it. And so that's this what we have tonight. Yeah, that is the one we yeah. have tonight. This is called uh, West of Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey Number no. Two Weeded Cask Strength. So it's a 110.6 proof. Uh, 112 cases were made of this, <coughs> and it was bottled in spring of 2017. Gotcha. And would you like me to run down the grain list on the back, or? 
Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, why not? Yeah, go for it. That was an awesome oh. distillery rundown. Thank you. Holy shit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the dude doesn't live closer. The dude right. divides. Um, so this is considered a weeded bourbon. The primary grain is unmalted yellow corn. That's why I knew we would like this, and I wanted to say this because yeah. we are big weeded bourbon yeah, fans. Yeah. Oh, so this is, the weeded yeah. bourbon. This Mars is right State. up your alley. Yeah, we love weeded bourbon. So nice. Yeah. So uh, the primary grain is unmalted yellow corn from the American Midwest. Um, secondary grain, unmalted Canadian wheat. Uh, tertiary grain, malted barley from Wyoming. Aging. Aged in new charred American oak for no less than a year, which is interesting because their website says they do California grains, but this one is apparently different. Although this is this is one of their older batches, and I got that uh, California yeah, grain that's not off of the, the website. website. And the, yeah, yeah, this isn't on the website, so they must have changed their practices. I so, uh, so you're going down the grain list. So I'm just yeah. going to interrupt you for one minute. Yeah, sure. Not to be rude to you. No, not at all. So I was going to say, but I never came back to. I started to talk about the corn. Uh huh. Smell. I heard you say okay. that. Mm -hmm. And then we start talking. I never got back to it. But the second thing I was going to say is I had that same first impression when I smelled Weller Twelve. Really? That's what I smelled. Oh. There. Uh, huh. I. Well, we'll get to that, the nose of it, here in a minute. Uh, continue with your... Uh, <laughs> Spark Delbert's attention. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, well, uh, aging, aged in new charred American oak for no less than one year. Tastes, uh, well, it tastes new. It's uh, unfiltered and hand-bottled. Uh, and there's the there's the rundown. So I get... Let's let's take a nose let's on take, this, and uh, we'll start with John. Huh? Okay, I'll say, can we, let's take a quick commercial break. Okay. Let's take a quick okay. commercial break. Yeah, we can we'll do that. Back, okay. All right. All right. Keep in uh, touch. Thank you Things for, uh, about to get real right now. Come we're on. We're Havana Cigar, Cleveland Bourbon Co-op, Premier Automotive, and uh, Northeast Jab Jazz North Coast Jazz Ensemble. Ensemble. Right. And that'll be it. We're just gonna fade out here for a second, and uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. See you in five minutes. <laughs> Sweet. <Good. coughs> Welcome three, back. Three, this is the Whiskey Roundtable, and. Um, Basically, we're going to get back to uh, we're going to hit this on the nose now, and uh, this is really this is this is a tough one for me to figure out. Um, I think I figured it out a little bit, but uh, I'm just going to say this right off the bat: either I'm going to like it or I'm going to hate it. There's no in between on this one. Uh, on okay. Because I've been while everybody's been talking, I've been trying to figure this out, and I'm actually having a really tough time trying to figure this out. What's in it? Because um, of the tough time, it is why you think you're going to love it or hate it? From what I'm picking up. It's okay. Because okay. this could be okay. a... Okay. I, I, I kind of like nickname some of these bourbons I get. They're, it's a trickster. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some that we've had that have been just like, I mean, like, rot... I mean, just a... Terrible. Horrible, rotten smell to them. And then uh -huh. it tastes like, holy shit, this is some of the best stuff I've ever... Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, just yeah. complete <coughs> trick on your nose. You know what I mean? To, it, your, your, all your senses, I should say. All right. This might be one of those, or I'm going to hate it. Okay. Um, See, I think it smells really good. It is extremely light on the alcohol for being almost 111 it proof. It's I mean, real, it's extremely super, light. It's super new, too. It's not, yeah, it's not a heavily aged bourbon. Mm. But it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of interesting notes. I'll, I guess I'll just start. Uh, it's got a lot of interesting notes to me. Um, at one point, somebody had said, corn, I'm getting that corn, but not like cooked corn where it's like real heavy like the mellow corn that you it's like oh well, shit that's fucking corn you know what i mean <coughs> i'm getting fresh picked like off the farm corn is what I'm getting. a lot of grain you get a lot of grain smell weedy kind of i get the weed i get the i get the oak i get all that but i was trying to pick out that yeah oh yeah you distinct. definitely get the oak and stuff like that out of it but there's other elements there that are very right. new to whiskey to me and Correct. it's very earthy i don't know how to smell it, like a nice smelling dirt you know, not like a horror, like a nice planting dirt. I, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, walking through the woods, foresty smells to me is what I'm getting a lot out of it. Um, aside from some of those things, pass me the bottle. Yeah, sure. I want to see if I'm picking up any of this on the... I said caramel a long time ago. I might be way off, but once I get past the oak and the corn, that's just something that I was reaching for. So they're saying we're going to taste vanilla, almond, toffee, brittle, and coffee. Ooh! That's what I'm trying to hunt. I, 
coffee? I smell like a. It has like a coffee smell. Is that smell. the dirt smell you're yeah. thinking? Maybe? maybe, yeah. It, it is like that, a coffee that, smell. That would make yeah. sense. If that's you talk what's about your earthy coming. Tones, yeah, that's where it's coming You know, coming it, from and I always coffee. get like that's what I'm getting. Out. That's where it's coming from. Because yeah. sometimes I get a caramel sometimes macchiato co- from. Uh, sometimes the dark so coffee and different things. Where I'm getting that. You know, you get that. You almost get that soil smell. It's making sense to my brain now. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm not picking. I don't. I don't know what this is. You know. Mm. That's what it is. I hope it tastes as good. Boys as and girls, <laughs> uh, what, what do you what do you think, John? What do you get on the nose? This what, absolutely you, nothing. I have. That's a, right. You don't have very good sense of smell. Uh, I don't have a sense of smell. Period. Yeah, I have anosmia, so I don't have a I don't have a sense of smell. I bet so, that comes in handy sometimes. It, it does. It's a huh. blessing and a curse. Yeah. We're talking uh, about that the other night. I, That's I, right. I Never could be picky. <laughs> My wife makes me clean out the fridge. I am on trash. I've been on trash duty since we met seven years ago. (laughs) (laughs) We're in here. (laughs) (laughs) Glad, yeah. Lucky for you. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Albert, what are you getting on this nose? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You didn't even say it was. A, oh wait, that's uh, right. yeah, yeah, never mind. No, it's, uh, yeah, nothing. It, it, it smells, smells like, like fucking booze. All right, there smells you go. like everything. Smells like <laughs> Albert, what you get? We could actually say that to him. Smells like whiskey. <laughs> yeah, what well, do you get? again, I, I get a lot of corn. It reminds me of the corn whiskey that I'm familiar with and grown fond to love. Um, nice colorations, heavily oily yeah. mixture. Yeah, yeah, yeah the color is beautiful. But colors, you know, nice. I'm getting it is a heavy some a, yeah, coffee really. grounds, that caramel taste that I was getting past, and, and definitely some oak that comes out. Well, I definitely smell the oak. Just, the it's oak is very oak. distinct, no doubt about it. Karen, are you, do you have the disease too? You can't smell anything. Well, <laughs> you know, I I have a hard time smelling right now just because I don't feel good. But um, I do smell the grains and the oak. And when you said like the earthy smell, yeah. you just hit something. Right. That yeah. I, I I can't explain it. I I don't. I get the I coffee. I get some of that but coffee, but it's there's still that element of that earthiness there. Yeah. Yeah. Which is unique. It may be like holy crap, this is amazing with that, or I'm gonna be like holy crap, crap. <laughs> you know. What I mean? yeah. Holy crap, crap. Yeah. Holy crap or crap, man. All right. right. So far, I, so I already gave yeah, my opinion out of the game. Right, let's take so a, let's, let's take our first Let's thank John before we actually drink it, and maybe yes. we won't thank John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great that you brought the bottle. Fuck you. It's <laughs> All right. That John, he's stupid. Don't mind that. Oh, I taste the coffee now. Oh. Wow. I taste the coffee. Do you? I tasted a whole bouquet of a bunch of different things. Yeah, it's it, really it good. hits you like. There's a, but it's there's a lot that it's, goes on. There's right a away. lot of pepper right out of the <coughs> gate, man. But oh, I'll tell it's you peppery what, as hell. It, it, it's so. I'm, it's got I'm, some heat. It definitely has some heat. Not on the nose, though. No. That is no. weird. No, I, get, I get that. the heat on the far and back end of it. It's not right away for now, me. Well, no? as soon as I actually get it first, really? I do too. I do too. And then I get a long lasting flavor. Long, long lasting. <coughs> yes. I'm with you. As long I get, finish. I get it right out of the gate. Maybe that's because my your sense of smell is. That yeah, could be, yeah. But, um, yeah. my honest opinion, do you want it to hear actually, it? you get that hit, that, head, that hot anyway. hit real quick, but it actually goes down smooth. Really yeah, smooth. it does. It does, yeah. I, uh, this is really good. It's amazing. Ah, this right. is really well, good. I want to hear, like, hear his honest opinion. What, what's your honest opinion? Um, trickster. Yeah. It's a trickster. But at the end of the day, I could I could see me drinking this. Yeah. Sure. It's good. It's a shame I don't have another bottle. This is really good, man. This is, it's okay. very, to me, it's good because it's so different. It is. But in a good but way. In a good way. Yeah. Well, in the nose nice and the taste. taste. My... John did a nice pick. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah this nice, is real nice pick. And I'm getting um I get the okay, coffee so, brittle. I get a lot of coffee out of that. I, I get a lot of I get a lot of coffee. I get dry oak really out of it. Good coffee. But I'm going to tell you, so I just hit it again for the second time. Mm-hmm. I don't get the hard spice that no. I did the first no, time. It's, smooth, it's gone. Man. Yeah. You're right. It's gone. It, the heat is gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is this is real nice. It is really smooth for 110. Like yeah, 110 yeah, for yeah. I, drink. I, 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 I could yeah. drink this all night. It does yeah. not taste like a young whiskey. It, no, it, it doesn't. doesn't. 
It does. They know being a year there. old. Yeah. Not it at all. It does not taste like your traditional. <coughs> I mean, you smell it. Pop it, it on the market it, it, real fast. We've had uh, some young whiskey, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can tell. So, mm -hmm. Town yeah. Ranch. Uh, <coughs> it, it, it is. Uh, we said it's 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 good. It's a home run move for sure. It's yeah. This is. Really, I still get that really good. Weird earthy. Yes. Even on the taste. I like it's it. It's not weird. It's good. I think it's, it mixes well with it, but it's and just it could so be, different. It could be my... I Very have a little bit cold. You me. know, I've been smoking cigars all day. I do feel a heavy dryness to it, but that could just be my thing No, it, does, it dries your palate a little it's bit, got, but then it, it, it finishes The nice. tannins are a little drying, but compared to so many other spirits that I've had, mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's out of line. I mean, it lines up with that, that roast coffee just a little bit. Yeah. You get some of that dryness, some of the tannins on the back of the tongue, Makes front sense. of the, the back of the teeth, front of the tongue, but it's not like licking a barrel. It's not splintery, no. right. dry, okay. you right. know? Yeah, I wish I could have done that, Joe. I would have liked to have seen it. So, Joe, happened. you put some water in there. I'm just trying to figure out. Could I just, yeah, I mean, if you don't, I mean, at the very least, I would just want to see the bottle. But no, you want to, thank you. Where's your water, honey? Um, I don't want to give him my water. Is this yours? Uh, Joe's got some water over there. Yeah, I'm doing a little silver. Good. So, yeah, I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah, no problem. There is just this caramely toffee that is I rolling that around on time. the back Dude, of my it, teeth. Yeah. Like this is really good. Goes. You know, I was, I was, John, before you came here, mm. I was uh, reading the website on this and uh, water, sometimes Adam Spiegel who I believe is the owner Whoa, of the distillery yeah, 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 he mentioned a that a when you drink water, this you want to be under the stars oh at so a campfire uh, it's, it's really it's, it's yeah. really and I can definitely taste this it Here, reminds me, a, me of being out on a camp and just hanging out under the stars and it's really good it's nice no, I'm missing my property. You can see the Milky Way from my front yard. Oh, no, okay. yeah. Because I'm Good so peasant. far off the grid. There's, It's me and it's redwood trees mm. to the coast, basically. Beautiful. And so I got to do that when I get back. I got to open this up because I think I have a bottle at what home. Do you think? Open it up, look at the stars, and have a taste. Heavy caramel, though. Yeah, this is like definitely that. something. You know, you do bonfires around here in the caramel. fall. Like, you add a little water. And I can, like, I can bam, see it sitting caramel, out at the bonfire. Dude. Like, interesting. Crazy amount. It goes for us. High proof. Did you is. put a little water it in it? Down I just did. Just, just, just it does. A yeah. Half a teaspoon. Really does. Yeah. Smell it. So what, do you guys, it. what are you guys finding? Heavy caramel. Heavy, heavy caramel in there. With the water. Yeah. I pulled it out of there with the caramel in. I don't know. That's. I don't taste any but caramel. I got tons of it. It's still. But, but I, again, I still get pepper. Been smoking cigars all pepper. day today. I had a cigar in my mouth. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I this agree. Morning. Chimelian peppers so. or something, something like that. Wow. Some of my taste buds are pretty, pretty. Chimelian peppers. But no, I, <laughs> but well, not just, just so not to confuse with uh, like black crushed pepper. Okay. I'm talking about actual like habanero pepper, like. Peppers. Oh, oh, like hot pepper pepper. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's got a lot. I, you know, I'm, you know, it's, that's going to be an interesting drink when it sits for two, three weeks. Let that sit for a while, Greg. Oh, come open. back to that one. Well, if it's missing, don't look for me, because I think I'm gonna go take it somewhere. <laughs> Dude, if you can find another bottle, that man. I will. I'll keep my eye open. Like, wow. like I said, it was yourself, but you know, it was tough to find this one. If you, if you can find an extra, I'd like to have an extra. Wow, that's we're gonna be nursing that for a long time. I agree. I, thank you be, very much for sharing this. this. Yeah, this is no, amazing. my pleasure. Fantastic. John, I appreciate you being here today. And, well, Fantastic. Thanks, so, thanks for having me on. I mean, this is what this we is do as part of this show is if you're a guest <coughs> and we feature one of your whiskeys here, um, and this is a, a part of the show. You want to make a great time, by the way. We're fine, <laughs> totally fine. Um, you get to pick out something on our bar in a box, whatever you want to try on the show. Take a gander over there, John. So we're going to take a commercial break, a and um, we'll come back, and uh, well, not really a commercial break, we're just going to take a break. Um, we've already mentioned the, our, the sponsors and everything, and uh, we'll be back in a minute, okay? Yo, All right, bye. There's no right. sound effect. Welcome back to the Whiskey Roundtable. So we, when we have a guest on the show, and um, they bring something or introduce something to us, uh, we let them say, hey, you know what? 
you brought us something special, and that was a very special drink. The uh, Sonoma County, the weed is uh, 110.6 whiskey. It's, it is fantastic. I, I love it, man. It's very different, too. I like getting, we all do like getting new experiences of whiskey, good whiskeys. Uh, you can you can scoot it closer if you want. Um, so we uh, not too close. <laughs> <laughs> Play foot. <laughs> but uh, so anyways, um, so he picked out a heavy hitter. Um, it's a Greg. Why don't you introduce it? So this is a uh, twenty-one year Royal Salute Scotch. Hardly a comparison. <laughs> uh, and this one is the uh, is the Sapphire bottle because it comes in a decanter they come in sapphire ruby and emerald and here in the states you cannot get anything but the sapphire bottle uh, coincidentally a couple fell off the turnip truck and we have one of each so um, John recognized this right away and uh, we've been hanging on to these for years and never opened them and we said you know what it's the holiday it's a special time uh, John was kind enough to travel all the way from California to do our show today and Thank you, John. Uh, my pleasure. We Thanks figured, uh, you know, what the hell, man, let's do it. We only live once, right? So we're going to get <laughs> in. Uh, I know that Albert's got some, he looked up some, uh, I do. some little no history on it. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to open it while you talk history. Did you put it up to the camera? Uh, yeah, I'm doing that while he talks history. Put the box so, up uh, first. Just a, a beautiful box. Yep. As a just a general background here, the Royal Salute is a brand of Scotch whiskey produced by the Chivas Brothers, nice owned by Bernard Ricard. Shows. <coughs> Founded in 1801 in Aberdeen, Scotland, the Royal Salute brand is uh, blah blah blah. It was launched on June 2nd, 1953, by the Chivas Brothers in tribute to Queen Elizabeth II on the day of her coronation. Mm, wow. Named after the traditional 21 gun salute, Royal Salute whiskey Ooh, look is look aged that. for a minimum of 21 years. So it's probably hard to go wrong with that one. This may be my first 21 year old uh, spirit. We spirit. 21 year old spirit. Yeah. I, I thought this was going a whole. I thought this conversation was taking a left turn there for a second. Like, really, let's talk about this. We were supposed yeah. to talk about whiskey on this show, but we're going to open up. High school girls, I keep getting older, they keep staying the same age. All right. My first 21 year old girl. All right. All right. All right. Beautiful bottle. This is this is an incredible. That's a porcelain uh, bottle, right? Yeah, porcelain. Yeah. Is it really? Porcelain yes. flagon made by Wade. Did you? Can you? Did you, you didn't. Did you hold the glass part? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. That is. And the juice stunning. lives up to its decoration. I I, I got to point this out. Beautiful bag there came in. Nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that felt bag? Yeah, yeah. felt bag. Go ahead, John. I, I have to point this out and show it to the people at home. For those <coughs> that don't know, American labeling standards are, are a lot different than European labeling standards, <laughs> and I always laugh at this. Poor pregnant woman on the back. Can we get a good shot of that? <laughs> Put a little closer. <laughs> closer. 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 Right about there. Twist it the other way. Other way? Other way. There yeah. it is. There it is. Yeah. Hold it. <laughs> Back yeah. a little no. pregnant woman. Yeah, okay. She's, okay. she's got to be it. at least eight months pregnant, yeah. scrolling down that drink. <laughs> and that's, that's the European standard. They always have that, that same pregnant woman on there. All nice. right. Okay. There it is. I never noticed that. Like, like you know, you mean bottles sold over there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether okay. it's beer, wine, or spirits. So even scotches over here don't have that. Uh, no, no, okay. no. Okay. And the reason I know that because uh, Anderson Valley does a lot of European distribution, and oh, wow. they they have a separate label that they That's have to print, and they and it all has that. I've seen that on other other beer brands that come from Europe. You got something special, Greg? I do. So the first time that me, you, yeah. pour it. you sure? The no, first it. time that me and Big G tried this was at Lizardville. Oh, for, did you? Because we, yeah, we had thought about opening this up. I'm like, dude, let's do it at Lizardville. And we were there one day. I was like, Greg, look, we're all Thank you. And uh, we did it, and it smelled horrible and tasted. Okay. Do you want to walk? Let me wash it out. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I tried it out. Oh, oh you're good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yep. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you, sir. I don't know um, how this bottle found its way into our house, you know? That's a long story. That is a long story really, that I really okay. can't talk about. Yeah, we just can't talk about that. Which one, Albert? Which one? Uh, <laughs> that one. That's Bert's. Thank you. 
adventures. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to give Joe a little extra pour because this has been killing him for four years. Literally killing him. Just give him. me a normal pour. We got a lot of tasting to do tonight. Good, good. Thank you. I'm going to let that breathe Sweet. a little bit, kids. Oh, yeah. it smells sweet. It smells sweet to me right off the bat. Good color. Joe, it smells completely different than when we had it at Rosenville. No. Better, it worse. It smells like a cheap whiskey to me. I like it. It's, it's, I almost, it smells like I almost a cheap smell blueberry in it. to me. Still. I almost smell blueberry in it. Really? I swear to God. I smell a lot of candy, a lot of sweetness to it. A lot of sweet, a lot of sweet. This smells like a, it's a game changer, that's for sure. You know, cheap, because I'm used to whiskey, whiskey to me. Really? Is it a yeah. trickster? Honey? That's how it was to me at Lizard. Really? I'm like, I'm like, I mean, oh my God, 300 something dollars a bottle, and that's what it smells like? Yeah. Nothing impressive. But I already know. Even this way is a... Yeah, I know. But I already it's know it's going to be. Do you want me to cork it or no? Oh, it's, it's not, it's not shocking okay. to me. The smell is no, not beautiful. shocking to me. Well, hey, you keep smelling the panties, I'm going to go in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm. It's logic. Isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Is that good? It is so <laughs> smooth. God, is it's like good? drinking water going wow. down. Oh, okay. You in, John? I'm in all the way deep. <laughs> that good? That's wow. balls deep right there. Lasting <laughs> flavor. Can't get any more in, man. Lasting flavor. Jeez, that finish is That's fantastic. Complex. It is ever changing. <coughs> Sweet. It is. Candy up yep. front. I hear it. You hear that? It's delicious. It's the angels singing. <laughs> it is. It's absolutely it's the delicious. The full flavor hits you. It's so good. You're going to laugh at me. It you is know that, so that, good. That, that Bourbon I was telling you yeah. about in the basement. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. has that same Mystical sweetness oh, really? up front from when I was six. Sleeping on the barrel. No kidding. It is that same sweetness I if that it was a chef. hooked me. Might have been a chef. That was a big drink in the day, Canadian, man. Though. Yeah, it was Canadian. Yeah. It's the L. <coughs> wow, that is that is a flavor that I didn't think I would ever have again. The That's flavor of my first spirit. And there it is, right up front. Wow. That is really cool. It's good. You can hear the Holy Spirit singing to me as it float down a stream. I have been waiting for so long for that bottle to be cracked. <laughs> this is very satisfying. So, so long. long. What do you think? <laughs> now that you have had it. This is so oh, satisfying. No, I've had it. Yeah. Oh, 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 I actually right, sampled it at Lizardville. Yeah, that's and right. it was just, to me, it just. <clears throat> the second pass is me, different it again. It smells like a cheap whiskey, man. It really does. Yeah. Huh. It smells like a cheap whiskey, like he, anything he, else. Joe has there. offered me everything, yeah, including but, but sex then, with his sister. If I would open that bottle, I told him. Oh I'd yeah, how was your it. sister? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. How was your sister? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Zip, tell your sister I was asking about you. <laughs> yeah, man, she says she don't want to talk to you no more. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> mm. Okay, this is. What do you think, dog? This is it's good. It's beautiful. Yeah, now it's open. We got to drink. It, it is. Um, it is beautiful. It's so wow. good, man. Um, it's got a peaty smell. It's got I, I a sweet, it. a sweet, peaty, <coughs> hot. It's like everything is in it's there. It's like drinking a craft candy. That's good. That's you good know what I mean? It really is. Yeah. Like, yeah. The peat really is good. like you paid a lot of money for some fucking candy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. you were blown away by it, you know. <coughs> the peat is so respectful of all the other flavors. It is. Yeah, it's it's, not it's super it's for, for people that respectful. don't. And I'm a space side guy, and I don't like peat. Okay. And it's there or gone in a flash, and then you're just yeah, like I it's disagree. fucking flavor I, flavor bomb. I'm still getting it. Flavor bomb. I'm man. still. Getting I am too. It. There's yeah. It, yeah. yeah. I'm just. I'm just. I mean, I just finished it 30 seconds ago, and it I'm keeps still. Going. And Shivas yeah, is going. known to be a slightly peated whiskey. It yeah. is. It's, there, it's a blended whiskey, by the way. Yes, it is. By the way, yes. so sorry. I, I'm sorry, Albert. This is made where? Um, Scotch Dale. Yeah, yeah, it's Scotch. Scotch. Yeah, yeah. It's Scotch. Mm -hmm. It's Scotch. a blended Scotch. Right, blended Scotch. Mm -hmm. it's they also I... make a um, one that I would like to feature on the show if if Steve ever comes on is the Shivas Century One Hundred. It should be on your phone, right? So it's a hundred. What's that? It's on the box. 
It's a hundred Scottsdale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Arizona. Ship of Century One Hundred is a hundred <laughs> Speyside scotches blended together. It oh. is on. It's like across the seas at retail. It's like four or five hundred dollars a bottle. It is so good. Yeah. Like, okay, Scotland. so like bottom of the line Shivas, I could do without. Okay. It's, it's not that good. So it, it, Ever- in Scotland, for those who are wondering, it's not that expensive, but it's not that good. There's just so much other stuff at twenty five to thirty dollars you can buy. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. just, I don't even bother with it. <coughs> but when you start paying for shivas, when you really start paying for shivas mm-hmm. like that, right. it's unreal. Yeah, this yeah. is a whole nother level. Unreal. That I, yeah. Never thought I would like shivas until I drank that Century One Hundred and mm-hmm. that. And it's fantastic. it's delicate. That's what's really blowing me away. It's, 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 it's a very, it's very that's respectful. That's a great word. Great telling word you now, it's yeah. very respectful, man. Yeah. And it's, it's like funny, too. Flower. It's so light. It is. On the tongue. Like, it smells But it's very oily. oily. And look at that. It smells Look expensive. how oily that is. I know. It's, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm done with yeah, it. And I, it's yeah, just I, very I, slowly yeah. draining down. The, I mean, it's crazy how heavy the drink is, but how light it is. That, that's right. That's yeah. I don't want to get too far out into the nebula, but... Dude, Greg was like, Greg You already was, said Nebula, you're yeah, out you're there. Fucked. You're gone. <laughs> Too late. Look at his eyes. He's just like a nocturnal animal. He's just, his pupils Greg? are so like, no, me. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, come into the Nebula. <laughs> Look at his Albert, pupils. Albert, come back. <laughs> <laughs> no. We only gave him three drinks. Sorry, Mrs. Santa. <laughs> Alberto, no. <laughs> but oh so, so I want to put this on Greg, man, but not me. Greg. Something very funny happened to him at the post office the other day, and it has to do with this scent. We're talking about a delicate scent. Uh-huh. Oh, Greg, you're on the spot now. Uh, yeah, you got to so tell I go, <laughs> You must share. So I go to the post office a lot because of my business and uh, mail stuff out and different things, buy stamps and all my stuff like that. So yeah, that um, one would do at a post office. Right. So I walk right. in the Portrait, I walk in the no. door, and, and there's usually this girl that uh, is there quite a bit that works there and sometimes she's there sometimes she's not but this in particular time she was there uh, again and uh, I walk in and there's like four people in front of me and um, it's now it's my turn and no one else is in the building uh, in line for service and I walk up I said hey how are you doing today and she says I'm good how how are you today she goes I've been smelling you since you walked in the door <laughs> and I said oh I said she goes what, what you wearing <laughs> so I told her what I was wearing. She's like, mm, "You smell expensive. <laughs> you like a delicate flower." <laughs> What's your address? What? I go, "Why are you coming to visit me?" She, mm, "You silly. What's your numbers?" I said, "I'm married." She's like, "You come back here anytime. I've been watching you." <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I experienced at the post office. <laughs> if, if, you wanna, if you want that to occur, you can just buy Axe Black. That's the secret. <laughs> Bod Black. Blod, blod, blod Black? Bod yeah. Black. Bod right. Black. All right. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we have it. For those of you that need a hookup. We have well, a winner. We're going to take a break. Axe, and we're Axe, the Axe store Body Spray. Send the check. <laughs> Send us the check at Whiskey Roundtable. Yes. <laughs> well, while you guys take a break and go get some black. All right, I'm so guys. Go oh. is, this, is this like Idiocracy? Sponsored by Carl's Jr. Sponsored by Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple things I'm going to get into before we end the show here. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Great job. I'm glad you uh, picked yeah, this out because you. I've been dying to open that up. But um, I have a few things on the whiskey news. And um, there was a hidden stash of pre-prohibition whiskey that they just found uh, in a vault to be auctioned off on December 7th this year. <clears throat> it is uh, being auctioned off at Christie's in New York. Is the greatest collection of spirits ever to be offered for sale in the United States. Century old whiskeys in perfect shape, more than 40 cases worth. A bunch of different (coughs) colors. Was this private? Yeah. It was private. You know, I've never been to a Um, bad Christie's. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. No. We discussed this. I've just never been to a bad Christie's before. It sounds like a wonderful place to be at the moment. Okay, it's not a strip club. (laughs) No, but correct. (laughs) <laughs> it is high they end. do have high standards. It's high end. End. Yeah, hey, do. when I get those pictures of me and Joe's sister. So we're sure. into <laughs> Irish whiskeys, and we like Green Spot. We've had Correct. the Yellow Spot, which yeah. was at twice the price. Thumbs yeah. down. Yeah, I agree. Uh, green Terrible. Spot is delicious. It's green really good. good. Yeah. Um, so Red Spot is returning ah, to our uh, okay. shelves because they had originally they, they had did, red, yeah. green, yellow, and, and, and blue. Well, Wine Reserve right here in Sugar <laughs> Falls, uh, they had all three when they first came in. 
I had red spot once, but it took a lot of penicillin to get rid of. <laughs> oh, no, they have yeah. blue. They did not have red. I see the sores on your tongue. They have blue, not red. <laughs> they have blue, not red. I saw red was there. discontinued in the 60s. Oh, okay. I swear to God, I thought it was red. The other variants that we like are green. We don't like yellow, but yellow spot. Um, uh, it's going to be 92 proof. It is 15 years old. In the United States, retail is going to be $120. I'm... Oops. I'm game. Oh, I try it because I like the age statement of 15 years. That's pretty it's reasonable. It's a darker whiskey. Though. It's a higher proof than okay. the other ones. Okay. So uh, Buffalo Trace is releasing their OFC whiskey, which is their original name of their distillery yes. with the OFC. Um, it's going to be the 1993 version. Um, it was the uh, OFC was the OG name of the Buffalo Trace, and the suggested retail is $2,500 a bottle. Mm. More than my key. Well, maybe and we, most of the time, what I they do with that get two bottles. Then. Mm, yeah, <laughs> most of the time, what they do with that whiskey is they auction it off for cherry. Correct. Um, You'll never see it. Jack Daniels has a new couple new whiskeys out. They're called the Taster Selection. Uh, they are Hickory Smoke and a High Angel Share. Uh, the Hickory Smoke is fifty percent. The High Angel Share is fifty three point five percent. They are forty dollars a bottle. They're three hundred seventy five milliliters. And um, unfortunately, most of the time you only find it at the distillery. Sometimes at shelves, if some if some lucky places get it. So I don't know if we'll get it or not. But it has been on sale since October. I'm kind of interested in that. Sure. Uh, a couple friends of mine, Jesse and Ashley, go down those areas right. sometimes, and I think I'm not sure if they were planning on it soon. But I thought I heard them talking about going down there sometime, and I was going to tell them, hey, if you, on your way, if you don't mind swinging by there and picking up a couple bottles for us. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to try that. And that's it for the Whiskey Roundtable today. I want to thank you for joining us. John, thank you for showing up. Yeah, Thanks, great. Thank um, you. Thanks for He's making the trip. He's a great friend of mine. I love hanging out with him anytime <laughs> you're in town. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, you have to hang out with me. So I um, think that's a deal. I'm your host, Joe Clark. Big G. And I'm Albert Santilli. And I'm Karen. And I'm Drink. John Passif. Drink responsibly. And be safe, everyone. Holidays are coming. Be careful. Thank you. Thank See you, you next week. Bye-bye.